about F-35C, the carrier variant spot. All right, folks, good afternoon. Uh, it's been a pretty impressive year for the F-35C overall. Um, VFA 147 began their transition as the first Navy F-35C squadron. Uh, they're about roughly half to two-thirds of the way through that syllabus. Uh, we just completed OT-1 aboard uh, Abraham Lincoln, integrating with CAG-7, uh, showing the ability of F-35 to see to generate sorties uh, while deployed at sea. We'll enter IOT&E, the official uh, evaluation of the F-35 uh, with the Joint Operational Test Team, or JSF Operational Test Team, uh, sometime mid-September or October, but there have been a couple of events um, kind of pre-IOT&E events that we've accomplished, OT-1 being one, and then a cold weather debt uh, up to Alaska being the second. In addition, Nautic support continues. Every single Top Gun class that has gone through for the past two years, uh, VFA-125 and VFA-101, have uh, sent jets and pilots up to work that fourth, fifth generation uh, integration piece as Top Gun continues to develop and refine those tactics so that when VFA-147 goes on deployment in 2021, uh, those tactics are well known throughout the fleet, not only in the F-35 community, but also in the F-18 community. Um, in addition to that, the first two full-time Top Gun instructors completed their syllabi uh, at the FRS this summer, uh, and they are up at, at Fallon, fully integrated with the staff, developing, uh, the initial Top Gun chapters to support F-35 uh, and their introduction into the fleet. Looking ahead, um, VFA-147 should be safe for flight sometime in October, uh, on track to meet that, that timeline, and then uh, should be fully manned, trained, and equipped uh, and receiving their 10th aircraft in February of 2019. Obviously, F-35C IOC is the next big milestone on the hori horizon. Uh, the piece that is kind of paired with that is combat capability demonstrated with full 3F software capability uh, in the IOT&E process. And obviously the Navy will be uh, monitoring that process very closely um, and up to Naval Aviation's leadership as to whether we wait for the entire IOT&E and uh, process to be complete or we uh, will declare IOC prior to the release of the report sometime <coughs> next summer. Um, but uh, we will IOC this airplane in 2019. In addition, uh, as alluded to uh, by Yank and Steroid, VMFA 314 will, will begin their transition to the F-35C next fall. For the first eight uh, F-35C squadrons that transition, it's going to alternate one Navy squadron, one Marine squadron as we continue with that relationship for tech air integration uh, and the ability to project power off the uh, off the off the front end of our uh, aircraft carriers. The first Top Gun class with dedicated F-35C students will be once again in 2020. Uh, and during 2020, uh, that's when BFA 147 will also begin their OFRP process in preparation for first deployment in 2021. The other thing that, that kind of I chart down there on the uh, lower right-hand side, the biggest thing to take away there is the uh, Every color on there except green is jets that are equipped with that 3F software. The reason that's important is because we see a, a huge jump in readiness availability once we, we load 3F onto the jet. Uh, it's just a more stable operating system for the aircraft. Uh, and so that is goodness as we transition uh, and continue to evolve the airplane. In addition, that 3F software is the, the full war, kind of war fighting capability of the uh, F-35C that we're looking to procure. Next slide, please. Obviously, as we all know, the threat uh, is busy as we sit here today having a good time. They are busy, busy figuring out how to counter uh, the technologies, the capabilities, and the tactics that we are developing currently. As such, the F-35 continues to, to develop and modernize to meet that threat. Uh, a lot of you have heard probably the acronym C2D2 or Continuous Capability Development and Delivery. That is kind of the, the roadmap and the plan for how we continue to modernize F-35. Along with that, the, the, the underlying hardware that enables um, the modernization of the airplane, that TR3 hardware, brings increased processing capability, uh, increased display capability uh, to enable those Block 4 capabilities. And we're going to see some of those here in a couple of slides. But 
Um, obviously, as we bring a new platform online, one of the biggest challenges is expanding the weapons clearances, not only from simply a carriage and release, but also that weapons integration. Obviously, every weapon that we procure uh, becomes more and more complex and technical, and the integration of that weapon into the weapon system of the F-35C obviously takes some time. So that is something that we're going to have to work through. Uh, it is a very aggressive schedule as you look at what the JPO has laid out. Um, but everybody is pulling the weight the same direction, same way, same day. Uh, and and uh, we will continue to work uh, to bring combat capability to the platform. Obviously, as the threat continues to expand across the frequency spectrum, the F-35 needs to continue to expand to meet that threat. And we'll see uh, extensive electronic warfare enhancements. Uh, and probably one of the things that the JET does the best is it's a bit its ability to ide identify uh, enemy combatants in the, in the battle space, and then to push that information out over to other platforms, enabling those other platforms to uh, share the same amount of situational awareness that an F-35 pilot enjoys in his cockpit, but pushing that out uh, and enabling lethality across the force. Uh, and that's where that network connectivity piece plays into it. And Admiral Han kind of alluded to it. Um, F-35 plays very well uh, with other airplanes. We are learning things each and every day uh, when we take the airplane flying uh, and integrating it into the air wing. Uh, there are challenges, but we're working through those uh, with the JPO and our industry partners. And with that, the ability to control net enabled weapons. If you think of the F-35C as, uh, as that exquisite sensor out there, pumping out information to other platforms within the, uh, within the air wing, uh, those platforms um, send them weapons downrange, and the F-35, with its signature capabilities, being able to uh, update those, those targets in flight for those weapons, uh, that is where we are driving to as we, we enable that kill chain from end to end. And then the mandates piece, things like auto GCAS, once again, ADSB, uh, RNAV, those are all things that are in the modernization program for the airplane um, that, we are, uh, that we're pursuing. On the sustainment side, obviously Alice uh, is kind of the, the lifeblood of the F-35 from a maintenance standpoint. Um, there are some issues, that, but we continue to work with that. Uh, I, I will tell you that our industry partners uh, are fully behind that effort. The amount of money that they're throwing at it is pretty impressive. Um, they recognize it, they recognize that the ability to generate shorties rapidly off an aircraft carrier is what makes us so lethal. Uh, and we can't do that if we don't have uh, the, the system to enable that. Uh, and as my, as my uh, supply department and squadron used to tell me, it, it don't fly without supply. Um, F-35 has made a, a kind of monumental shift in how we manage the supply chain to support combat flight operations at sea. Um, and, and that's going to require the Navy, once again, to look at how we do that differently. It requires some advanced training for our folks. Uh, we're getting them that training, educating both in squadron and uh, ship supply folks to be able to support F-35 at sea. Next slide. This just kind of goes into some of the hardware uh, capabilities that are going to be upgraded on the F-35 over the next you know, three to five years. And I think the biggest takeaway in a forum like this uh, is just the simple number of industry partners that, that are, are working on the airplane to modernize the airplane and meet the threat. Um, it's pretty impressive. Uh, you can see vast number of EW upgrades, uh, the increased processing power with the Tech Refresh 3 with the integrated core processors, those are the brains of the airplane, uh, a better display as, as the sensitivity of sensors gets better and we're able to sense more, we have to be able to display that in an easy format for the pilot and that, uh, that new PCD is an integral part of that. Um, Probably one of the biggest wins is those DMS changes. Uh, the new DAS system is a more reliable sensors. They're lighter. They require less power and less cooling, all things that are important uh, as we look to move the airplane to the future. And not only that, the, uh, the unit cost is also cheaper, so that's a win all the way around. Hey, Spot, can we uh, jump on to F-18? I don't want to cut the people on the write-off. 